Hi, everybody. Welcome back um, to Mapperton and our House and Gardens tour. I just want to quickly say hi to everybody. There's so many people from America, which is amazing, but of course, all over the world. Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, we've got Louisville, Kentucky. Hi, everybody. Um, whoops, that's Welcome just back. me talking, listening to myself. Hinsdale, Illinois. Um, uh, thank you, Mary. We think you and your family are pretty amazing to offer these tours. It's a highlight, otherwise Groundhog Day. I totally get you on that one. Um, hi, Fitzy. Um, hi, Blaine. We've got Oceanside, California. Midwest representing. Oh my gosh, so many. Rhode Island, Delmar, New York. Um, mother and daughter, hooray. Um, brilliant, you guys. And um, you were going to come visit us on Mother's Day, so it's good to be able to visit this from a distance. And from Poundbrae, brilliant. Um, so just keep saying hello. And Indiana, remember, I want to get all 50 states. Michigan, Tampa, Texas, we're doing it. Um, you guys, thank you so much. Again, I'm here with my uh, wonderful mother-in-law, the Countess of Sandwich. You would say hi, hi to all. I all always say hi. Yeah. <laughs> hi, everybody. It's lovely that you're here. And thank you very much for wanting to listen to us. Exactly. And look at it. And on such a love. Oh, well, I suppose it's morning for you. It's a wonderful sunny afternoon here. We, but we do have somebody from Wales, nearby Wales. We like that, of course. Reading, Berkshire. Did I say that the right way? Berkshire. Yeah. I know, but it's spelled uh, Pennsylvania. We're getting there. Um, brilliant. Um, and Blaine from our American Montague cousin. So there we go. Um, uh, North Carolina. I think that could be a new one. London. Brilliant. Um, amazing. Keep it coming. So as you guys probably saw, we're going to be doing the tour today on four different bedrooms, uh, historical bedrooms in the house. And I'll be asking your questions and probably my questions too to my mother-in-law who knows more about this than anybody else. So here we go, over to you. Where are we right now? Well, we're in the great reception room of the house, which is called, used to be called the Great Chamber, because the reception room in these um, Tudor and uh, 17th century Stuart manor houses was always on the first floor. The first, the biggest room was on the first floor, and that, of course, is where they had the parties because downstairs in the hall, it would have been full of sort of rather grubby people. Right, would it have dogs. been too cold, do you no, think, downstairs? No, I don't think no. so. Smoky and full of sort of chaps gnawing bones and dogs gnawing bones. Right. So you were treated up here and you've got an elegant room. So this was no. not a bedroom as we're seeing no, no. it now. This no, no, is no, why they were called the Great Chamber it was, because yeah. it was a... And it was a guy called Marc Giroir who wrote the great book on English country houses and sort of defined this. And in this one, we've got... Of course, do you remember last week we were talking about Robert Morgan, who yes. built the house and Mary, his wife? Well, he built, the, he built this, or he put in this room. So he put in the um, lovely fireplace there and with the overmantel there, which has his motto on it, loyalty will prove itself. And the same coat of arms that we saw last, well, the week before yep. last down in the drawing room. <coughs> and then this wonderful frieze of sort of Tudor people and cherubs going along. Fantastic. The ceiling, which is probably the only first one of this sort in Dorset, is pr was probably put in by his grandson, not by him, was, or even his son, but it's a generation later. It's probably 1560s, while the, <coughs> the rest of this room is 1540s. Right, because when people come and tour, um, they, this is the ceiling that people really want to see, because this is yeah. special, isn't it? Is it is very special. I mean, it's special in England. Yeah, Actually, special. I mean, it's for, at the end, there are three or four, and that's it. That's it? it. Yeah. Three or four of these ceilings, yeah. that's it. Yeah. And isn't that's there it. one similar in Hampton Court there's, Palace? Well, exactly, that's one of them. There's another further north. Right, we're getting um, lots of comments on what an amazing ceiling, that ceiling, that ceiling, ceiling, that ceiling, exactly. Yeah, but um, I might just comment back that there was one moment when I was asleep in this room when suddenly I heard a terrible drip, 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 drip. And I, of course, woke up. Switched on the light, went and looked, and there was a drip, drip, drip coming through the ceiling here. And I thought, oh my God, the ceiling will come down. So I went up into the attics and opened one of the attic cupboards and crawled along to um, see where the water was coming in. Right. And as I was crawling along, I stubbed my knee on a, on a rolled steel joist, a steel joist. And I was so pleased because it meant that actually the house wasn't going to fall down because Mrs. Labouchere had put steel joists in. <laughs> then, I got so to, then I got to the place and found there was an old baby bath there. 
So it must have happened before. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so, and, and, and luckily the ceiling didn't fall down. So speaking of leaks, by the way, there are every time it rains here, we do have lots of leaks, don't yeah. we, pretty much? And actually, um, um, I suppose it must have been 20 years, no, about 15 years ago when we won the uh, nation's finest manor house, um, there was an article in the Daily Mail on Mapperton and on me particularly. <laughs> and I said that we were always going around for leaks. And when um, a rather distinguished group of historians came uh, for a tour, they bought me a bucket and mop as a present. <laughs> as a present. Well, I was outraged, because of the, yes. And if you've been to my yoga retreat before, we had a massive leak that everybody had to help with buckets and pots and pans. It's just what it's like. All right, so okay. moving on. So right, we're moving on. Yeah. That wonderful screen there yes. is 17th century Dutch. Can I touch this? Yes, of course you can. I can, thank you. Yeah. So I Absolutely. do have to ask. I get very nervous. So 17th century, century Dutch. Dutch. And it, they were probably panels for a wall turned into a screen later. And it is signed, but I lost where the signature is about 10 years ago. And I haven't spent enough time and looking for it. The purpose of screens, because they came later on, so it was a wall. The purpose of screens were sort of because a lot of times people would put yeah uh, normally against drafts, right? Yeah, it's keep yourself warm to keep exactly. yourself warm. I can't find Interesting. that signature. I just can't find it. So we've and got that's beautiful. The, this is the most distinguished piece of furniture in the room, yeah. which is French uh, Louis the Fifteenth. Um, it's called a bureau plat, you know, a flat desk. Right. And it's truly wonderful, wonderful, wonderful piece of French furniture. So this, and then also we've got this piece yeah. as well, which is French. Is it's that right? French, and it's sort of Louis Quinze. I mean, sort of Louis the Fifteenth. Not quite, quite not good enough. I mean, not quite as good as the other one. Nowhere near as good, actually. It's beautiful. And with some rather pretty little silly. Um, um, Pink roses, China with pink well, roses. Well, I think on. that's lovely. And this room also has an incredible view, doesn't it? Which you yes. guys saw um, when you were, when um, my husband, who's filming it, uh, we can see it's got pictures or uh, great views to the gardens down below. Let's see if he can get it going, going. There's the, the and there we go. We got, a, we got a bit of it. We'll take it. So the other, what else? In this room, oh, look, views. Views, we like views. In this room as well, let's look at these uh, five pictures here uh, along yes. the wall. These are pictures of the family house Hinchingbrook, which we've talked about endlessly. Yeah. And they're about 1740. And they're rather primitive. They're, they're, the perspective is a bit extremely odd. And the size of the people is pretty odd. And they yep. must have been, I think, May, painted by a local painter, a local They're to They're beautiful. So these date back to when? Is there a well, date on here? Sort of 1740. Right, 1740. Like so those of you who are just joining us, remember Hinchingbrook House was the original family seat. And like many homes after the Second World War in across Britain, uh, it was sold. Um, so many homes. And it, luckily, it's still intact because, in fact, after the Second World War, many homes were demolished or left in ruin because the homeowners couldn't keep the upkeep. So um, luckily, we anyway, have this, this one beautiful. Was fine. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. moved here. And of course, I used to sleep in this bed here. And I do remember one wonderful occasion when it was winter and I was going out to dinner with my father in law's uncle. Right. And as I went, I said to my father-in-law, I'm going out to dinner and I'm coming back. Please don't lock me out. Oh, dear. And of course, he did lock me out and I rattled the door and of course it was locked. So I had to crawl in down the anthracite, down the coal chute, right into the cellars <laughs> and then crawl up here covered in coal and stuff. And I got into bed and I thought, thank goodness. Oh, no, and he turned all the radiators off. On oh, the so, 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 so yeah. I thought, thank goodness I got into bed and it's, I didn't think I was going to. Well, we love all these stories. So we, we do have, we've got some, um, we've got laughing. Somebody's laughing, emo, emoji laughing. That We've got some questions. I just want to pause before we move on. We've got a couple questions about how many bedrooms does Mapperton have? And that's kind of a hard question to answer. Well, isn't it sort it? of depends how you use, I mean, whether yeah. they're being used. I think it's about 10, isn't it? 13. I, 13. There oh, we go. Camera says 13. 13. Exactly. And then we've got um, the rugs. Do the rugs have any historical? We've got questions about the area rugs. Do they have any histor historical meaning? Well, I mean, they're just, they're, they're just fine. Uh, that's Persian. 
Um, that is, I think, uh, Caucasian. No, it's not. It's, um, it's Southern Asian. And that is a very fine tribal rug. Again, look out, Luke. Right. Very fine tribal rug from probably Uzbekistan. Okay. Fantastic. We've got... No, they're not. There's no... I mean, they're historical rugs, but there's, there's no historical right. Um, right. connection with the So the, then we'll carry on. Is there a large closet or dressing area for this room? No. No. This one, no. No? no. Um, how insulated in the house? I noticed the windows are single pane. Oh, going over here. He's looking right there. So how... He can hear us, though. How, how insulated is the house? Well, I had double glazing put on these windows. Oh. And your husband took it off. Oh. I don't understand why. Oh dear. Okay. So, oh dear. Okay. So there, there's your answer to that one. But <laughs> so, that was a question, was it? Yeah, that was a oh, question. How is oh, like... Well, the answer is uh, yes, of course there were double glazed uh, panels there, yeah. Right, right. And I don't understand it. Okay. Um, is there a notebook or binder with listings of furniture and history for each room of the house? Mm. Well, yes, we've got, of course, we've got, a, we've got a full inventory of everything in the house. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and we earlier don't keep on... It. We don't keep it in the rooms. But what we do have is we have, um, in the house earlier, in Hinchingbrook House, they kept meticulous uh, inventories, uh, yeah. meticulous inventories, so well, we can see everything that's been sold, <laughs> right, for some of it, yes? Yeah. All right, we're entering into here. Um, We've got hello from Pacific Palisades, California. I want to say hi to everybody. We've got really quickly, uh, oh, there's so many people who have come on now. Oh, I'm not going to get to every Birmingham, Alabama, that's the one I want to say. Another Kentucky, Boston, UK, Nottingham, UK, brilliant. Connecticut, okay, I've got you all. So we're entering into well, now, and Diane, we're going to answer that question right now in a second. Uh, what room are we We've got, now come into what's called the West Room. <coughs> Bec uh, we because it's in the west wing, and it's the only room that actually faces north and south. It's the only room with a decent south-facing window, actually. Right. And yes, it did have double glazing on the north-facing windows as well. Um, so a little yeah, bit... But of the important thing about this room is, again, this absolutely stunning fireplace and the plasterwork above it. Again, Robert Morgan. But this room is interesting because you, you remember when we talked about the staircase hall, and that in order to put in the grand staircase, two rooms were shortened. Yes, cut short. yes. This is one of them. Right. As a result, it's got a very pretty, and done by those wonderful contractors called the Bastard Brothers. The Bastard, yeah. The Bastard Brothers from Blandford. And so that pretty little circle there. Yeah, can is, you get that? Is Bastard Brothers. Luke, again. fantastic. So the, speaking of fireplaces, is there fireplaces in each of the bedrooms? Not quite. There are on this floor, but right. there aren't in the attic bedrooms. Right. There are Some, quite yeah, a number, no, actually. There are a couple in the attic bedrooms. Yeah. Jack, yeah. Williams, yeah, both yeah. have one. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so we've got uh, the question about the tapestries. Were, it's on one of the episodes of uh, the TV series that's coming out on Sunday night in America, Smithsonian Channel. So I can't give too much away about these tapestries because they feature. But we can say that they are 18th century Brussels. That's what we, that's what I Is that what learned. they said? Yeah, that's what right. they said. Okay. Yep, yeah, 18th century in Brussels. But I am going to say that the tapestries in this house suffered from the Montagues in the 19th century in Hinchingbrook, in the old family house, because in that century, those wicked Victorians simply chopped up tapestries to fit the bit of wall yep. they wanted to cover. So I think you this can one see. is chopped up. And another one that we have is, another one is cut. Yeah, exactly. And so there, let's not talk about yeah, tapestries. Yeah, no, no. Let's talk about these two beautiful bits of French furniture here. These two commodes yeah. are about 1710, very early, very rich, and very generous proportioned commodes, these two lovely things. And then this piece of furniture here is called a Duchesse Brise. And it's a day bed on which you sort of lay after lunch. Okay. And when I first came into this house, I looked at how awful this, yeah. this material was. It is, in fact, cut silk velvet. And I took a bit, I sent a bit to a specialist firm in Northampton, in the sort of area, weaving areas, and asked if, how much it would be to get some. And even then, 30 years ago, it was going to be about £600 a yard. 
but you can see so, uh, right there where it hasn't been faded. Yeah, so you can, it's wonderful. It's yeah, absolutely it's beautiful. wonderful material. Wonderful. Absolutely beautiful. And it feels wonderful. So we have a question about the furniture again, and this is a really good, was the majority of the furniture collected during a specific era or everything kind of over time, would you well, say? Well, I would have thought that the um, French furniture, of which there's quite a lot, was probably collected after the French Revolution, which was 1789. And it was either, either collected possibly by the Sixth Countess Louisa, or it could have been, a lot of English families thought they would scoop up French furniture after the revolution, so they sent, <laughs> they sent their kind of overseers or factotums over to France to the auctions of the good French furniture, while the French, fur the French furniture owners had been guillotined, and it was right. quite a good period. Brilliant. Of scooping up furniture. I love it. So we've got a question about, and I can, are the bedrooms used, or are they just for the tours? So no, no, they're used. They're used. They're, they're used. they're used. Maybe yeah. not this one, because let's talk about this bed. We don't really use this do we so, so do for people know? to stay i well, well I, I have slept in here before yes i have always used it and it's probably 17th century could be a tiny bit earlier mm. what? what 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 i'm not What's sure what luke's now? showing there i think he thought it was a horsehair oh, mattress what really matters about <laughs> this bed is that these 16th and 17th century beds are always too short for 20th or 21st century people but my father-in-law had this lengthened, you can see there. So actually, an ordinary person now can sleep in it quite comfortably. And also, these holes here is what, what I learned, is that these holes were used to help keep the, the mattress, the mattress tight. tight. Yeah. So, so all these holes down here, all the way across, would yeah, help tight. keep the mattress tight. Yeah. So, um, and they used, to, I think my husband was trying to pull up that there was a horsehair mattress. Is that what yeah. you were thinking? I knew it. There's not. There used to be a horsehair mattress. Um, it's actually a very pretty bed. It's very charming. And I think it would have had curtains around it. Um, uh, but it, it has never had curtains around it in my day. Um, quite, we're going to move to the next room where we can, ask, we can answer Betsy's question. Was the furniture brought from Hinchingbrook? Or was it at Mapperton? No, it was brought from Hinchingbrook. Brought from Hinchingbrook. Yeah. So we've tried. You've tried to keep the Hinchingbrook collection. Oh yes. We just. It's just in a different home. Yes. Exactly. Um, right. As we go through here, I think it is important for all your viewers, all my friends in America now, to see that here is my mother in a very chocolate boxy. A picture from about 1916, I should say, and there, next to her, is a self-portrait of my mother-in-law, John's mother, Rosemary Peter, who was an artist, smoking eternally um, cigarettes. Fantastic. English cigarettes, I think she smoked. Yep, of course. Well, no, not of course. I mean, a number of her friends always smoke all the whiles. Oh, and right. They, uh, yeah. I mean... Right. I don't know very, I, I, you know, I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. <laughs> no, I have, and my goodness, I used to enjoy them. Uh, this model here um, is about 1710, 1720. When it was made, it would not have been rigged, so the rigging is probably later. Okay. It's, um, I mean, it's again, it's terrific. It is and terrific. the frightful thing is that, Julie, you and I can do a little job on it this year, which is oh. we've got to take off the ultraviolet protection and put on new ultraviolet protection oh, screen. I didn't even know that there was oh, ultraviolet yeah. violet protection yeah, on it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's asked, what oils are used to polish all the wood furniture? Well, it's a, a, a beeswax furniture polish. Beeswax furniture polish. Good question. I didn't even know that. Um, somebody has said to Luke, one has to love the stripy mattress. Yeah. Well, one, actually, one doesn't. <laughs> and I will tell them. Your, uh, now, our friends are sorry about the mattress in there later. Okay. You want to come in. I want to them. come in here. So I'm going to come in here down. because this is, I, as an American, I love this. This is called a Thunderbox Lou. Um, so, a thunder, so a Thunderbox Lou is where the chamber pot used to be under. Is that correct? So you I, would know, have, I think it was always like this, but it always had a handle at the side and you just pulled it. Yeah. So this is, can I just and demo this, yeah. Luke? I know you can't get in, but hopefully you can see it. You're here. I open it up. Use the loo. And pull the And pull the... It isn't working. Oh, it's not working. Oh, dear. So there you go. But usually it does work. Usually it does work. So um, this is... We've got a few of these in the house, don't we? One. One. Two. 
Two. One more. No, one, three. Yeah. Uh, yes, upstairs. Good enough, yeah. Yeah. Good enough. It doesn't work. Doesn't we tried work. it. Um, it but yeah. Work. Yeah, I did. I went like this. No, Here you go. You do that, and then it flushes. Usually it works, everybody. But <laughs> and while we're in here, Luke, I'd like you just to look at that little, uh, that little cartoon there. That's a cartoon of somebody called Maisie, I think she was called, uh, um, stuck in a traffic block. And she's saying, why can't I get anywhere? And it's, uh, it's saying that my father-in-law, who was against uh, English foreign policy in Suez in 1956, had to put a couple of block ships in Piccadilly. Fantastic. And that's a sandwich. Uh, that is 18th century cartoon of the fourth Earl of Sandwich with two girls. Uh, each side a sandwich. Each side a sandwich. Oh, I get, oh. Do you know I've seen that so many times I never. <laughs> it's now, the penny has just dropped. Okay, so we're going to head into the third bedroom that we're showing on this tour. And interesting. Let's go into this one. Let's first. go into this one first. Okay, we're going to go into the chapel room. So we're it shouldn't be called a chapel room because that chapel was always a church, but it's always been called the chapel room. Heaven right. knows why. It's always been called the chapel room. There, it's a little bit indented there because that's where our cat likes to sleep, Sophie. Well, <laughs> I was going to tell you another story about a mattress. This has always been the main spare room of the house where people, well, friends have slept. We used to have concerts here by a very famous uh, cellist called Steve Nisselis. And Stephen and his wife Pauline came to stay and he was going to do a concert. And he said, you know, Caroline, I'm, he's quite outspoken, I'm never coming here again to do a concert uh, uh, because that mattress is like the Andes. <laughs> so I said, okay, well, if you'll do this concert, we'll put the, con the, we'll put the proceeds of the concert towards a new mattress. <sighs> so as far as I know, it's the only concert he's ever played for a mattress. There we go. Much better mattress than the one that you saw in the West Room. I'm certain of that. Um, bro, oh, we're going to no, look, proper, yeah, okay, no, it's a proper, okay, it's a proper mattress. mattress. You don't have to look at it, honestly, it's really all right. <laughs> he is looking at it. Right, um, okay, what else in this room do we well, want to... what is a music? These pictures of Rome are, are all eight or ten of them, are absolutely charming. Beautiful. They are watercolours of engravings, they're not at all valuable, but I mean they're sort of just very charming, they're typical 18th century postcards. Oh. You know, if you went to Rome, you couldn't take a photograph, so you've got to have some way of, right. way of remembering it. Now, I've just been looking her up, this little girl, oh, this grown-up girl there. Right. The, this uh, one this here. This one here is supposed to be Augusta Montague, who was one of the illegitimate children of the fourth Earl of Martha Ray. Incidentally, she had nine children with the fourth Earl, apparently, of which five lived. So Martha Ray had nine, nine with the fourth Earl. Apparently. Oh, and, and five lists. And Augusta okay. was married somebody called Henry Speed. Now, you might think that's really boring, it isn't actually, because it was an, ali a an alias. His real name was François de Virier, um, Baron de quelque chose. That was really good. And because after the French Revolution, he and his, f parent, his family had come over to Britain and changed their names right. from French to English. He then was arrested for fraud Ooh. and it, and ran away to the Isle of Man, not very far actually. Mm. And he then tried to get into Parliament, got into Parliament, no, he got into Parliament, hoped he wouldn't be arrested, but was arrested. And, and that finally, was the end of him? No, finally he went back to France after the restoration of the monarchy. Okay, yeah. interesting story. All right, this, uh, really quickly, this one I love. I love this because this is going to look like it's just been painted. It is, but it's it, embroidered. It's embroidered. It's this embroidered. one I couldn't, I had to literally well, look at this yesterday to actually see that it, it's embroidered and it's so it's beautiful. It was probably done by one of my forebears in Lancashire oh, so because beautiful. my family came from East Lancashire under Pendle and of course were associated with Lancashire witches. And probably that was done by one. They had masses of time on their hands so they probably would have just... I know. Well, we all have masses of time on our hands these days, right? We can no, start embroidering. Absolutely don't. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right, last room that we're going to is right now called the Tudor Room, but as I learned yesterday, is actually not called the Tudor Room, or shouldn't be, or wasn't, or something like that. Is that right? And does Hang on, I'm getting tangled. Yep. 
Um, I know that no, it's no, it shouldn't be called that at all. It used to be called the chapel dressing room because it was the dressing room for the chapel room. So this used to be a dressing room for the room we were yeah, just in. Really Can you neat. imagine that? Nice and big. Easily. Um, because when people came to stay, um, the woman would have the big room and her husband would have a room to dress in. And so it was oh. called the dressing room. So this was the chapel dressing room, dressing room to the chapel. Now, we of the... Oh, this has had Mrs. Labouchere. Do you remember Mrs. Labouchere yes. who owned the house from 1919 onwards? Because she clearly... Uh, I think that fireplace is 17th century, but she put her coat of arms up there, <coughs> emulating Robert Morgan, who put his co coat of arms over the... In right, the so that's chamber. Mrs. Labouchere's. That's Mrs. Labouchere's. Labouchere's, yeah. It's a bit sort of gross, her coat of arms, actually, rather late for the 19th or uh, 20th century, whereas my husband John's coat of arms is kind of clean and clear and earlier and smart. And it is you very can't call smart. It smart. Now, th I, this is my favourite. Oh, yeah. Because uh, it's you. Oh, yeah. It certainly is. <laughs> it's I my mother in law. Hate it's my favourite. It mm, it's so cold. beautiful. But, oh, no. it's I, cold. Think I was cold, yep. rather irritated, and I didn't want to have it done. <laughs> um, and I hadn't got any choice. And it was done by the same artist who painted my mother. This was done in 1955 or 6 or 7. Uh, no, 6. Um, and painted by the same artist who painted that chocolate the box yep. picture. Perfect. Of, uh, I, I, I love it. So yeah. we, we've and got the, a couple questions. Can final, I? Fi maybe, yeah. I just would like to say that chap there, we none of us know who he is. Oh, so if anybody... He's, Mon he's not a Montague, he's not a Hunluck, he's not a Heyman. We if anybody can know. recognize him, type it in. If anybody can recognize him, yes, don't hesitate to tell us. Exactly, you'll win a prize. <laughs> Um, we've got a couple questions here. Are there any William Morris textile fabrics wallpaper in Mapperton? No, not, no, no original, no, no, no. No. Um, in fact, there's, yeah, there's a sofa down in the hall. Oh, yeah. Which is William Morris, Morris. material, but it's a, it's a contemporary material. Right, right. Yes, it is absolutely William Morris. It's one of the great standard patterns. And then we've got a really good question that says, are, as the bedrooms are all used, where are the bathrooms? Oh, that's <laughs> a secret. <laughs> we're not doing bathrooms. Right, we're not. But there are, I promise you, uh, Nigel, there are, we've tried to put in bathrooms. But let's remember that when this house was first built, and, and even all the, uh, as it continued to be built, there was really only one bath. Is no, that right? No, no, or no, no, no. There were more than that. I mean, there was one, two, three, four bathrooms on this floor, and then two upstairs. Okay. Um, but it is said that Mapperton had the first bath in Dorset. Said. There you go. Who knows? It's said. There you go. Exactly. Um, do we know the square footage of the whole house? Good Lord, no. No. Mm -mm. Exactly. Um, we do have, we just have to say hi to Ned and Sarah Packenham. Oh, um, hi, Ned. Those Regency, so Ned is a furniture expert. Those Regency Canes chairs we just saw, do you want to read that? Are by. Oh, because I'll say Gillows, but I'm sure it's not pronounced oh, the right way. Gillows, are they? I do. Are you? Well, I believe you because I always believe Ned Packnam. Um, and we're made in but, 1803, so we've got no, a really that, good friend on here. Yeah, but Ned, there are a lot of other ones made to the same design, aren't there? Because you told me that. Yeah? Right. So fantastic. Thanks, Ned. Get, and I, what is more, when I came to this house, they were painted nursery white. Because the Victorians either painted things as sort of chocolate brown or nursery white. And I looked at these chairs and thought, that's not correct. They shouldn't be nurse, uh, nursery white. And so I had them re and gilt. And exactly. I love having Ned and Sarah on here, though. But it's brilliant. So if those of you tuning in, Ned Packenham is a very good friend of ours. So is Sarah, and he is a furniture expert. He just spotted those and told us 1803 Gillows. Brilliant Regency caned chairs. Um, so, uh, Melissa, thanks for your comment. So kind. Um, they are called the Mont Montgomery pattern. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was a rather, it was a rather well-known pattern, I think. Ned, so, stop stealing the show. show yeah, Actually, exactly. Ned, just yeah. Why don't, <laughs> why don't you come down and do some more, and you can do a show on the on just on furniture. Exactly. We do want Ned to do a show on furniture. Okay. So that's it. We are going to. Oh yeah. Can I just point out? Here we go, in this hole here, this hallway here, here is my lovely mother-in-law and my lovely father-in-law and the painting in between them has any, did we just put that there? Yeah. 
Yeah, I just thought I'd. Yeah, but is it's lovely. These are by Maggie Hamling, and they are the cartouches, the drawings for the portrait that she did of us. Oh, okay, yes, and the portrait is in, in London. London. Yeah, it's in London. Yes, of course. So, um, you guys, thank you so much. If you have any other questions, please be sure to ask them now. It's a beautiful day here. I can. The sunshine is incredible. We'll give you a view out uh, to the front of the house. And again, we'll be back here next Tuesday with my father-in-law, the Earl of Sandwich, oh. where we'll be discussing naval um, history I, and, and yeah. peeps. Yes. I must just mention two things that I completely forgot. In the Great Chamber, we has been used for filming. And the last oh. time it was used for filming, it was uh, for Far From the Madding Crowd with... Carrie Mulligan. Carrie Mulligan. And they, re they dressed the room completely and they painted it navy blue and it looked wonderful. Oh. Yeah, so we've had Aunt Gwyneth Paltrow here with Emma, yeah. Carrie Mulligan, Far From the yeah. Crowd, and coming soon on Netflix, Ow. Rebecca, Rebecca. Lily James. And we've had Robert Downey Jr. and Huey Grant and all the rest of them. And all, yes, that's true. That's true. And so, Max Beasley. Again, you guys, thank you so much for joining um, as we are closed to the public. So as we are closed to the public um, for, the, uh, for the time being and for who knows how long, um, any donations that you can give goes to the upkeep of, of, the, of this historic house and towards, obviously, preserving uh, England's heritage. Um, we appreciate any donations. They go, again, straight into the repairs and the upkeep of this house. Uh, my husband has already had to fix how many leaks so far? Five. Five. Ten. Yeah, they're all Who's counting? Yeah. Oh, oh, um, so thank you guys so much. You love the stories and the personal touches. And that's what makes, can I just say one more thing? And that's what make these, makes these homes so special and very different from going to a museum or a National Trust home where it is somebody who is, of course, told the stories and they're just retelling those stories. We have stories straight from my mother and my father-in-law who know these stories better than anybody else will ever know them. And so that's what make this, makes this tour even more special. So thank you guys so much for joining in. Somebody put great filming, Luke. And yay. Yay. I think you've got another leak, leak, leak coming oh, up. Yeah. Yeah, Luke. Oh, 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 yet another. Yep, oh. that is another leak. We won't even show you guys the one down the other hall. That is a bad one and still has to be fixed. Um, Thank you guys. Um, and those of you in America, I am going to just toot my show. It's airing, premiering Sunday night, May 17th, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, An American Aristocrat's Guide to Great Estates. And we, I start in Scotland at Inverary Castle. Set your DVR, especially those of you watching Michael Jordan's The Last Dance. I know it's at the same time. Set your DVR and make sure that you record it. See you guys next Tuesday. Bye. Have a lovely day. Oh, in so, lockdown. So maybe or not. that was jolly good. Thank you, Cheerio. Love it. Um, somebody put your lovely, elegant, wonderful voice. So nice.